everybody welcome to my channel great to have you here this video I have been thinking about doing for quite a while and I've really been kind of back and forth on it because I think palettes can be really subjective when it gets down to what you like over the first edition of the palette and then the inevitable sequel to that palette because a lot of times quality will be consistent for example you like the quality of Urban Decay eyeshadows the ones in the Naked 2 palette are probably going to be really similar to the Naked 1 but it's more about what you prefer in terms of shade selection I think with a lot of these and so I thought if it's just going to be me giving my opinion on what shades I like best does anybody really care? But I do get asked these questions a lot, which should I buy? So we'll go through these kind of rapid fire. I'll let you know which ones I like best. And as far as my opinion on them, you know, you can take it or leave it. Maybe this video will just give you some things you might not have thought about before if you're considering that second palette from whatever line it might be. In a lot of cases, I gotta say, I like the first ones best. Um, it's interesting to really lay everything out and look at them and stop and realize that the original that I got is the one that I probably use the most and like the most. So I'm going to kick things off talking about the Lorac Pro palette and this is the first one that came out and I absolutely fell in love with this palette. I continue to love it. I think it's great quality eyeshadows. Very soft, very very pigmented. Um, the kind of shadows you're going to want to tap off some excess you know because your your brush will really pick up a lot when you go into these but I just loved how it was one row matte, one row shimmer but a lot of the basic shades people would want. You've got that dark matte brown, the black, the really true black, by the way. A light brown, a really great mauve, a gold, a taupe in there. I mean, there's just so many fabulous things happening in this palette. And I almost think it's like the more I enjoy that original, the more critical potentially I'm going to be of whatever comes out is the second edition. So I, of course, got the Lorac Pro 2 and I do like it. I think it's great quality, super pigmented. The shadows are soft and easy to work with, but it's as far as shade selection goes, I don't think it's quite as essential as this one is. You are getting some interesting shades. That navy, I mean, gosh, this palette is growing on me, and it's primarily for this navy shade here. It's gorgeous. There's just more kind of like in-betweener type accessory shades in this palette. It's like, this is the beautiful dress. These are some of the accessories you'll put on with it. Does that make sense at all? While we're on Lorac, let's talk about the unzipped palette. I like this just about as much as I like the Lorac Pro original palette. I think the shades in here are just stunning. This palette awakened me to how much I love a goldeny or rose gold shade paired with a deep rich burgundy type color because you can do that with this palette. I have done some of my most favorite eye looks ever with this palette. I just think the shades are stunning. Lovers of rosy shades, of rose gold shades, this, this is amazing quality. So more recently, Lorac comes out with the unzipped gold. And yeah, these shades are beautiful. I can rally around a great dark brown. I can rally around a beautiful gold. But the uniqueness for me is not there with this palette. This is special to me because it's got rosy and mauve shades. It's got goldeny shades like this shade uncovered right down here. But you're pairing it with something that's a little different than just deep brown. This super dark burgundy shade unbridled here is exceptional and it makes such a beautiful partner to these metallics. Here, I mean, I've done looks that I like with this, but it's just not as special as this one. Just my opinions, just tossing this stuff out there. Food for thought. Okay, we've got Urban Decay Naked. This is the original Naked palette. I love it. It's my favorite of the three main naked palettes. Versatility is the big reason why I like this best. I think you've got a couple of really great essential basic mattes in here like Naked and Buck and then you've got fun shades to um, go in so many different directions with. Half Baked, a Fabulous Gold, you got some purpley tones, you've got some tones that even border on cool bluish colors. Um, you can go very deep and dark, very light and natural. Naked 2 comes out, not saying I dislike it because it does have I think the great quality that I've come to expect from Urban Decay but I think you're loaded with mid-tone shades in here that don't give you near the variety of looks that the Naked One does. It's an overall cooler palette. I think if you really like taupes you might enjoy this. Um, it does give you that one matte black in there that is nice to use as a liner or something to create some contrast but I just find I can't get as many different looking looks with the two as I can with the one. Then they came out with the Naked Three and it's all things rosy and 
this again does not give me as much variety as the naked one but I do love the color selection I personally like the rosy toned shadows a whole heck of a lot so my ranking on these would be the naked one is my favorite this is my second favorite and this is my third favorite I'm gonna move on to the balm and nude tude nude tude palette is amazing. I love the Balms palettes. I love the creativity behind their palettes, just like packaging, concepts, and everything, um, but the quality of the shadows really does back that up. You know, it's not all totally cutesy frills, but the shadows are actually really, really good. This really is one of my favorite neutral palettes. I love the variety of finishes in here. They really do a good job of sprinkling in fully matte shades, dark shades and light shades, and even some shades that have like a little bit of an interesting spark going on as well. You've got super, super dark um, black and brown. I love the shade called Sexy here. It's a great dark berry wine type color. It really reminds me a lot of Lorac's eyeshadows in terms of the quality. And then they came out with Nude Dude. And so this is a fairly recent release here. Nude Dude also gives you some incredibly dark colors, but in terms of the mid-tones, um, I think they do a little bit more with rosy type shades. And this was one palette where I thought the second edition, I'm not saying it's not pigmented, but I didn't find these particular shades to come off as I don't know, intense and beautifully rich as the first one did. I really, really like that about the first one. And I just found a few of these shades to just not come off as bold. You know, it's one of those situations where, yes, I'm glad I have it because I just, I'm kind of a collector of the Balm eyeshadow palettes. I really enjoy them. But if somebody told me, you know, you can only keep one, I'd go with the first one. There's just a buttery creaminess, a beautiful texture, especially with those shimmery shadows that's just really exceptional. Let's talk about Too Faced and the Chocolate Bar Palette. The packaging could not be cuter. I mean, for those of us who love chocolate, this is just a great thing. And I also love that the shadows, of course, smell chocolatey, as everyone and their mother has probably pointed out. It's a nice mix of basic neutrals with a few interesting pops, you know, some shades that give you a little something different than just the typical brown look. I like the plum. I like this gold a whole lot. But I think it's overall a brown lover's palette with just a few extra pops. And I really, really like it. So then the semi-sweet palette came out and this is a situation where I think a packaging improvement was definitely made with the second edition. I like how this is slimmer but it still gives you that kind of chocolate bar feel that the first one had and whenever I look at these side by side my eyes just kind of keep going back and forth and I'm thinking you know gosh I see a lot of similarities but I kind of see just enough differences, you know what I mean? At first, I really wasn't all that compelled by the semi-sweet palette. I, shocker, was even thinking about not buying it, oh my gosh. But I went for it and I've kept pulling it out and I honestly really like it. This nougat shade up here may not look like anything too fancy and special, but I think that's just a great, like, soft, pinky beige color that's so, so necessary. It helps in transitioning and blending things out. I love peanut butter in here. It's one of those fantastic kind of terracotta type colors. Kind of a double whammy down here. Your gold, your rose gold, love that. Something I loved about the original that might take it just a teensy step above the second one was that I love this shade right here. This burgundy I thought was great and I loved pairing it with that gold. And this shade up here was kind of plummy as well. So if you really like plum colors, the semi-sweet doesn't have that going on. But at the same time, I still really like this. Um, I like the mixture of shades. It's kind of hard to define this palette, but I would say this is a brown lover's palette and this is a brown lover's other palette. I like them both a whole lot. And finally, for the lovers of all things matte, you've got the It Cosmetics Naturally Pretty matte palette here. It's a great grouping of matte shades that aren't all completely just brownish neutrals. You know what I mean? You've got some fun shades like this one right here, sunset, gorgeous kind of orangey warmth coming out of it. You've actually got plums and navy blues. Um, I think there's a lot of directions you can go with this palette and I think the texture of these shadows is incredibly easy to blend one into the next. It's just super easy to work with. Then around the holidays they came out with the celebration palette which this is is one of those that I have the full review on so if you saw that you already kind of know my feelings. I'm not sure if this one is still available and by the way both of these have that shimmery trans 
transforming pearl type color that you can work with to, um, I don't know, accentuate some of these shadows, go over them, give them a different kind of finish. But I just really prefer the shade selection in the first one over this one. I think there are more unique things going on in the first. There are more pops, I guess, of colorful shades. Here you've got some really nice deep and dark colors. You've got some nice quality neutrals, but there's just not enough jumping out at me in this palette. You can get some pretty looks with it, but not the kind of special different type looks that you can get with this one. And as a whole, I really like the first editions of these palettes best. And it might have just been that the shade selection in those happened to appeal to me more. Might not be that way for everyone, but hopefully this video gave you some info so you could maybe make some decisions for yourself. The sequels that I have that I really am enjoying almost as much as the originals right now would be that semi-sweet chocolate bar palette. I really like that. And also the Laurent Pro 2, like I said, I d if I had to choose between one and two, I would pick one, but this one's really growing on me. Again, if I have specific reviews and tutorials using these palettes, I will link to them below, and thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.